Business Brain, episode 481 for Wednesday, September 6th, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take a topic or a couple of topics and we analyze them together to help tune our business brains so that we can each keep on living that charmed life. Sponsors for this show uh, are fastgrowingtrees.com slash businessbrain, where you can go and save 15% off your entire order between now and October 15th. This is a business that I love. We'll talk more about it in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. That's cool. I'm glad that uh, Fast Growing Trees is... uh... Yeah, grown, man, it's a great. They, it's they've grown a, that business a lot. It's they a fascinating have. story, yeah. and it's a good business. Like it, it yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But it, it, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. I yeah. um, I I did something unintentionally. Like I, I didn't set out to to do what I'm about to describe this weekend, or at least not with the term in mind that that everybody uses. But um, it, you know, we just came off this Labor Day weekend. I wound up having most of Friday sort of flexible as well, so I kind of had like four days off. We finally here in New England had decent weather. It was like in the 80s and sunny every day. That has not been the case this summer. It's been raining like crazy. You oh, know, yeah. yeah, it's just, which is fine. I mean, I, I don't want to complain about the rain too much when I know that there's people that are like their, you know, homes are burning and stuff because it's too dry, but it's, it's not been typical here. It's, you know, we've, we've had really kind of not ideal weather and we wound up with this weekend with ideal weather. I had, uh, no gigs. I had a gig Thursday night and then nothing all weekend. We had nothing really scheduled all weekend. And our daughter is home from Italy for, she's home for about four weeks. She's got about a week and a half left. And, uh, and this was like the first weekend that we didn't just have like things jam packed in like, like you kind of do. And so I wound up having essentially having a staycation at home. I really kind of stayed away from work all weekend. We didn't, go nuts. We went out to eat a couple times and we, you know, we did a couple of things, but we didn't like cram our schedule full. We spent a lot of time sitting outside in our patio by our nice. fire pit and in the hot tub, just chit chatting. And yeah, I did a couple of chores around the house here and there, but it, it was, it was the closest thing to a staycation that I have ever had. And in fact, it wasn't until about 10 minutes before we recorded that I realized that's kind of what this weekend was. It was like, it was like we were somewhere else. It was like we were away, cool. but we were home. I never quite understood that term before as an entrepreneur, Shannon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't hard. think it was possible, really. Uh, you know, and and certainly having our our daughter home was uh, the catalyst to this. Otherwise, I yeah, I definitely right. would have just gotten into my normal routine of of doing whatever it is I'm going to do. It's probably some work some mornings and some chores and you know, filling it up with like, well, we should invite people over. We should go out and we should do this. It's what are we doing with all this free time? And it was, it was truly fantastic. I, I like, I highly recommend it. If you can possibly trick your brain into letting you do it. Um, it yeah, certainly wasn't done, intentional. Uh, yeah. We've done a few episodes about, you know, unplugging and yeah. really trying to get away. It is really important and, and good for your, uh, good for your brain, good for your body, you know, kind of get, uh, rejuvenated sometimes it is, I find it difficult as well. And, uh, uh, I think that sometimes it is good having that catalyst. Like I know my, uh, my daughter and her fiance, when they came out like back in July, we did all kinds of stuff with them. We went to Napa and then we went on hiked up in the redwoods and stuff that I would not be doing during the week. And so it was nice to, uh, to, to get away. It was good. Yeah, I'm. I'm curious. You have, you have some vacation homes now. I I understand that you have turned your vacation homes into businesses. At least when you're slippery not, math, Dave. It's slippery I, math. I, no, I, I understand. It. And I, like, I think it's great. I'm. I'm not questioning any of this. Yeah. But my where where where, where what I am curious about is: Are there times when you're at your vacation homes where it feels like you're away somewhere or does it feel like you're at your house and you need to do the things to keep it up to date and like like how does that work for you is it is it just a mix of the two and it it's never uh, one or the other because we run them as businesses i often 
it can often feel like I constantly are looking thing, looking at things with a different eye in the sense of, oh, I need to fix that. Or, you know what? Some guest is going to, you know, this is going to be a problem. This doesn't work, or this looks like somebody could get hurt, or I need to paint this. So the way I deal with it is, especially when we go up with, with guests or friends, I, we always go up early and I can walk around. My wife can walk around and we can go, Oh, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So by the time people get there, we can sit and relax Ah. because otherwise I will, I find myself working the whole time. Even when people are there, I'll be like, Oh, I got to go down and do this. Oh, I got to do that. So we've just changed the structure. And even when we go up by ourselves, we'll go up like on a Thursday and say, Hey, you know, we're going to work all day Thursday. Yeah. Get these projects done. Maybe part of Friday, but then Friday afternoon through, you know, Sunday or Monday, we're going to enjoy the place. Okay. Um, so you, so you, so you actually schedule it. it. You really do. You have to. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. I, well, yes, you have to. I realize I some people might not have to, but it's different. Yeah. 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 And we have a, we just bought a new, a new place that, uh, it's supposed to escrow supposed to close today. I'm going to get the keys oh, tomorrow. So congrats. that'll mean, yeah. yeah, thanks. Driving up there tomorrow or the next day and starting this all over again, where I'm going to be just walking around going, okay. And listing projects and timelines yes. to get things done, keeping it organized. Otherwise I have to have like this structured enjoyment. Uh, otherwise I just, I just work all the time. I know. I like this idea of structured enjoyment because I, I mean, and I, and I understand it like, especially after this weekend, like I, I feel like, I feel like a door perhaps opened for me this weekend where it was like, Oh yeah. I, I like, I, I, I certainly like this. I mean, I had a lot to do today and I did a little bit of work. I knew there was like yesterday morning, uh, we, we were recording this on Tuesday. So the morning of labor day, I knew that there was something I wanted to get out essentially first thing once the week started. And so I just did that yesterday morning and got that out and, you know, maybe spent 30 or 40 minutes doing it. But, uh, before everybody else woke up, cause I got up a little early and then it was just like, all right, well now we're just going to chill for the day. And it was really cool. a fascinating thing to see our house differently. I, I will acknowledge that. I don't know that this would have been possible had we not created some additional outdoor living space oh, yeah. last That's year. Good. That that mm-hmm. that really has been, it has changed the way we view the house because it is this this sort of area of our property that we never used before. I mean, it's connected to the house, but it was just off of one corner. We really never went out there. It was never quite even finished. It barely had grass growing, and now we have this beautiful patio and a fire pit and a hot tub right. and stuff. But it, like that, that's where we spent a great deal of our time this weekend was just sitting out there, you know, and, and hanging out. Yeah, whatever, that's really nice. So. I think it's yeah. really important. And also, uh, you know, I feel like I've been kind of grinding for 25 years. Yeah. So it's, I, I love being able to sit. Like my thing is Sunday morning, right? Sunday morning, I want to sit on the deck. I want to have, enjoy my coffee. Uh, it, maybe even hang out till midday there and just relax. And it, it does something for me. Cause I feel like, okay, you know what? I, this is very simple, but I feel like I've earned this few hours to relax. All right. Hey, you know what? Fall is planting season. It's true. Many plants actually do better when planted this time of year, but you have to know where to start. And that's why I love this business. That is our sponsor this week. FastGrowingTrees.com. The experts at Fast Growing Trees curate thousands of plants so you can find the perfect fit for your specific climate, location, and needs. You don't have to drive around in nurseries and big garden centers. Fast Growing Trees makes it easy to order online and your plants are shipped to your door in just one to two days. We've tried this at home, right? It's amazing. I love businesses like this that just take my headaches away, especially for things where I'm not really an expert, but I kind of want to have it. Like, you know, it's nice to have plants, right? You get privacy, shade, or just natural beauty that you add to your yard, right? They have these in-house experts ready to help you make the right selection with growing and care advice available 24-7. We have bought stuff from Fast Growing Trees over the course of this year, and they have been so helpful. We had one plant that we got, and we're like, are you sure this is going to work in our climate? And they're like, of course. And then we get it and we planted it and, you know, a weekend, it was like, I don't know. And they're like, 
Trust it. Trust the system. That thing is thriving now. They were right. Like, it's, this is amazing what they do. I love fast growing trees. It's so great. Even if you've never had a green thumb, they'll make you feel like you do. Like they have with over 1 million happy fast growing trees customers across the country. Plus their 30 day alive and thrive guarantee, you know, kind of stands for itself. Listeners to our show here, get 15% off your entire order when you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash business brain, but only through October 15th. So that's 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash business brain. One more time, fastgrowingtrees.com slash business brain. And our thanks to Fast Growing Trees for sponsoring us this week. All right. We got an email from listener Robert here. Uh, who asked a question that is near and dear to our hearts. And I think near and dear to the hearts of many different uh, entrepreneurs out there. How do you know when it's a good time to hire your first employee? There are times when I have way too much work and other when I barely have enough. If I don't have enough, how can I afford to hire someone? I'm afraid to make the leap. Yep. <laughs> You want to you want to start with this? I have alone. lots of thoughts about. You're not alone. That's right. Yes, you're not alone. Not yeah. even close. Yeah, yeah. I, that you know, we did a we did an episode on this um, a few year a couple of years ago, episode three fifty six, and we talked more about what type of employee you should hire first. You know, and I think Dave, you're you were kind of leaning into you always hire a salesperson first to you know help grow and. Well, uh, my, I, more more specifically, I, yes, the sales will help you grow. But the reason I like the idea, and it, it only works if it works for your business, but the reason I like yeah. that idea is when you hire a salesperson, in theory, they will contribute immediately and directly to the bottom line. So if there's yep. nothing nebulous, and it has nothing to do with the employee. It's all about you or me as the entrepreneur, right? I need to be able to justify their cost and a great way to easily do that is to literally see them bringing in dollars for the business. And then that yeah, makes it I, super I, easy I to I think pay. that's great. Yeah. And, and the, on the, on the flip side, if you're the sales type person yeah, uh, or the rainmaker, you know, yes. I, I was always the guy, you know, finding the deals and everything. So hiring an assistant was critically important to me because it freed up so much of my time. Yes. Oh, and I like that. Yeah. So uh, it just depends on the role that you play. Yep. If, if you're not the salesperson, maybe you're the creative person and you're going, wow, I really, you know, I have this stuff and I need to sell it or I have these, you know, yeah. whatever you're selling, um, these services, you, then you go out and find a salesperson. But maybe you're the person out meeting with people and you're like, boy, I just can't get these jobs done in time. So I need to hire a technician uh, sure. to, to help. So it it's very specific to what your current needs are. Um, but from and, and to back it up a little bit, I think like Robert's asking, you know, what do I do? I have work. A lot of times I'm overloaded. Sometimes I don't have enough. Yeah. So you know, that is the challenge. So it, it, you know, you need to have some financial resources to carry you through those times that you don't maybe have a lot of work for that person. Yep. But you also have to have a system in place, a plan, if you will, for what they should be doing when things slow down or you don't have work for them. And that's where I get like back in uh, that episode 356, my whole thing was you need to hire somebody that's super versatile, uh, that can do all kinds of stuff, especially as a small business owner. If you're just getting started, someone has to wear many hats. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's very valuable too. And, you know, I, I get it. The salesperson, I get the whole assistant thing, but I don't know that your first employee can be a specialist. Oh, no, that's I'm, true. I'm, they need to be I able to do lots of different things. Yes. Yeah. 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 So hopefully they can help you with making some calls, uh, with building some spreadsheets. Maybe they, you know, even just running errands for you or help on your website. I mean, those are the kind of things I just remember that I was scrambling to do all at once and and finding someone that could that could kind of stick their head in. And then over time, we identified more skills that, that they were, they could focus on like, you know, you're really good at customer service. So you're sure. very good at 
the administrative side or the web side or the sales side, and then they go into those those roles. So I I'm I lean towards hiring you know a generalist that yep. is super reliable that wants to bleed to build your business in the beginning because you got to tell them it's going to be very hard. You know, it's not easy. And and if you don't know what you're doing, like I did not know what I was doing. I hired my first employee. It's up and down and it's not structured as much, but they can have a dramatic impact on your business. And so there's there are definitely people that are attracted to to that kind of role. Now, I like this idea of hiring a, a like a talented person as a generalist. I, I mean, yeah. you, you have to have you have to have things for them to do both for, for you their do. peace yeah. of mind, but also for yours. Like you need to see them doing things for sure. But uh, yeah, yep. looking, looking for someone who has, uh, who is just talented at the things that, th at whatever it is they do. That's a good person to have in your organization, especially a first employee. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah and so yeah. I think that helps you balance things out where you're like Robert saying, he's like, yeah, sometimes I'm not busy right. enough to have somebody. Well, I would argue that you probably are busy enough for planning, for expanding, maybe updating your website, creating some content on your site. So you want to get somebody that can help you write that stuff or, yep. um, you know, and there's a ton of stuff to do following up with previous customers, uh, making sure your Google, my business page is up to date and your reviews are coming in. I mean, I could sit here and name 50 things that, that you could assign someone to do that maybe wasn't directly related to what was going on in your business today, but would help. No, but it'll help polish road. things up. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. So, yeah. In fact, so maybe, I, I would say that's a great list to start to build. And I, I want to do this together. Idea. You, if you, whatever comes to mind, Shannon, you just said, you know, building your Google page, like building out all of your socials, just keep making sure everything is consistent and up to date. Cause I guarantee you, you've got at least one that's sort of, like fallen by the wayside Absolutely. because yep. because you're you're not focused on it you don't you don't have time to be focused on it and you don't think about it as something you need to do until you hear two guys talking about it and you're like oh yeah that is something I need to do let's make this list together and then we'll publish it and uh, you, you know we can keep it as even a living document on the yeah. uh, on on the site and and that way when you when you're looking for something for someone that you are hiring or have already hired to do or heck. If you can't figure out what to do tomorrow, do this for yourself. Like it's going to make you feel productive. So send it in feedback. Yeah, I love that feedback at businessbrain.show. We want to hear from you. This is, I, 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 I love this. This is great. Yeah. And, and real quick, you know, to back up Robert a little more, yep. it, maybe you need to uh, look at your finances and maybe get a line of credit in place oh, to help you bridge those times that it's not, you know, super busy revenue wise, but building wise for the future is important. So think about those things, how you'd carry yourself, either build up your cash reserves, uh, get a credit line, both ideally. And that way you won't be so uh, worried about when things are slow. Absolutely. Again, feedback at businessbrain.show is where we would like to hear from you. Please send in all of those ideas, the, like the tinier, the, the, the least, the more inconsequential, the better, because there's no such thing as an inconsequential change to your business. Send those in. Keep on living that charmed life. And uh, we'll see you next time.